All right, turn to Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah 42, verse 1, says, Behold my servant, whom I am of hold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the isle shall wait for his law, for his Torah. Alright, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father Yeshua, I just come to you this afternoon and I pray Jehovah Yeshua for your Ruach Chodesh. I pray that you filled each one of us here today. I pray Jehovah that you use me today and use this message Jehovah to bring forth judgment unto the truth. I pray, Yeshua, for your word to go out and to bring forth that due fruit, Jehovah, that can only come from your word, that can only come through a heart that repents. And I pray, Yeshua, there would be repentant hearts and that, Jehovah, you bless this message, Yeshua, and that it may bring forth fruit unto eternal life. I pray in that precious name. Amen. So be it. So Isaiah 42, verse 1 says, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Alright? He's speaking of Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua is called his servant. Yeshua is called his elect. And the spirit, the Ruach Chodesh, is upon him. And he's the one, the only one, that has bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. It's already been happening. The gospel goes out. Yeshua says, go out, yea, into all the world and preach the gospel and teach all nations whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you until the end of the ion, the end of the world. Alright? He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth. And the isle shall wait for his law, for his Torah. This is the whole purpose of why Yeshua came. To give witness to the world. He's gonna, he, he's, he came to bring the forth the judgment to the, to the sinners. All have sinned. All are guilty. All are going to be judged of the Torah. And He's come to bring forth judgment. And He came to preach repentance. Beginning with John the Baptist who prepared the way before Him. Okay? He was the messenger before his face to go and prepare men's hearts turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers all right to soften their hearts to get them to repent it's called the ba baptism of repentance all right yeshua says here isaiah is prophesying of him he's saying behold my servant yeshua whom i uphold Mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my ruach, my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall bring forth judgment to the earth. He shall bring forth judgment unto the truth. He shall have set judgment in the earth, and the isle shall wait for his law. Alright? Last Sabbath we read Micah chapter 5. All right, let's turn there real quick. Micah chapter 5. Verse 1 
says, Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travailed hath brought, hath brought forth brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. There's a bringing forth. Alright? Isaiah 42, it says, He shall bring forth judgment. He brings it forth. Okay? Micah says, but thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth. He appears. He's born. He comes. The Messiah comes to the earth. This is the fundamental doctrine of the Messiah. He comes forth. Okay? He comes forth for what? To bring judgment to the earth to preach the gospel of the everlasting gospel of the kingdom restoration the time of reformation of all things to restore that which was lost to save that which was lost to bring again the captives to bring them out of the prison houses to set them free to open the eyes of the blind to heal the sick to bring them back to the garden of eden to mount zion to the heavenly, to the Father's house, to restore all things. The gospel. But He comes with the Torah. He comes with the message of the Torah. And He comes with salvation. His name means Yeshua, Yah salvation. Alright? Micah, He says, Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. He's from everlasting. From everlasting the everlasting. His name is yad He vav He. Alright? We read Micah. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. We've learned where the great stones were plastered. The Torah was written very plainly. Remember all the stones. Remember all these messages about the rock, the Eben of Israel, the stone of Israel. Remember how they took great stones how Moses was commanded and Joshua fulfilled it. When they went to the promised land, they took great stones and they plastered those stones. And they wrote very plainly all the words of this law, all the words of this Torah. And they read it in the ears of all people, of the men, the women, and the children. They all heard it. Okay? That's the law. We learned that where the stone is laid is the place of judgment. It's the place of the throne of Jehovah. Alright? It's a place of judgment. Alright? In Genesis 49, let's turn there real quick. We read this about the shepherd and the stone of Israel. We're learning the foundation and why over and over and over again the scriptures talk about the stones, the stone of Israel. Genesis 49 verse 22 says, Joseph is a fr fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. 
but his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Okay? We learn about that. Turn to Genesis chapter 28. We've learned how Jacob, he took a stone that he laid his head upon and he anointed the stone. Genesis chapter 28, verse 16. And Jacob awoke out of his sleep and said, Surely Jehovah is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. All right. He took the stone and he had put for a pillow for his pillows and set up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. All right. Back in January, I preached this, okay? Turn to Luke chapter 7. Gospel of Luke chapter 7. Okay? We read here in Luke chapter 7. Starting in verse, let's go back to verse 44. He says, And he turned to the woman and said unto, unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but in but this woman since the time that I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint. Okay? But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Okay? He's saying this to the Pharisees. He's saying this to the scribes. We're going to go backtrack here in a, in a bit. He's saying this to the lawyers. Why is he talking about his head and the oil. My head with oil thou didst not anoint. You didn't anoint my head. They don't recognize that he's the Messiah. He's the anointed one. Alright. My head with oil thou didst not anoint. But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven... The same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with, with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Alright? Let's go back earlier to verse 36. Luke chapter 7 verse 36 says, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisees' house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, okay, which she knew, when she knew that Yeshua sat at meat in the Pharisees' house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Yeshua answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor, which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, 
He frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. Notice what Yeshua is saying. Thou hast rightly judged. What does Isaiah 42 say? Behold my servant on whom I uphold mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall bring judgment to the earth. He will not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. What's Yeshua teaching Simon? He's teaching him judgment. He gives a parable of a creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50 is the creditor. Okay? Jehovah is the creditor. And what are they what 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 happens to both? And when they had nothing to pay, there's no sacrifice that Jehovah accepts. They have nothing to pay. So he's giving them the gospel. This Pharisee who trusts in his own righteousness, Yeshua knows who these people are. Okay? He knew who they were. He still went into these people's house. And he still gave the gospel to them. Okay? And he brings forth judgment to them. And he teaches them judgment. Alright? He talks about the creditor and the two debtors. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Then he asked a question. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Okay? Which of them? They're both forgiven. The same gospel, the same blood of Yeshua covers them both. Which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And this is what I see in, in, in people who get saved. The people who are forgiven most, they love most. They know from the pit from whence they were saved out of. They know from whence they came. They know what sin is. Alright? They understand it because they lived in sin. And they hate sin. And they know what the judgment of God is. And they know what the Torah means. And they know what repentance is. And they know how to get saved. And they can preach righteousness. They have a contrast in their life. They know good from evil. But people who don't get forgiven much, they think nothing of it. They, they go on into Phariseeism. They get to so high and holy that they say the blood of Yeshua, don't even, I don't even need it. You're in a sad place. You're damned to hell. Yeshua says, you will no wise enter in. Thy faith, he told the woman, thy faith has saved thee. Nothing you did. What she did was a testimony. Pouring the oil is a witness that this is the Messiah. Listen to how, listen to how, how many, how Yeshua is running circles around these Pharisees. He's at so many different levels, they don't even know what's going on. They literally do not know who is standing and eating with them? If they knew this is the messenger of the covenant, if they knew that this is the judge of Israel, they would have repented. They would have, they would have been, Simon would have been on his hands and knees and crying with his tears and wiping his feet with his tears if he had believed. All right? It doesn't say here that he believed. He just responded to the question Yeshua asked him, all right? And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? 
I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. What's she doing? She's bringing forth fruits, meat for repentance. It's fitting. What she's doing is fitting for someone who's repenting. She's not just saying some prayer, a tearless prayer. Jesus, save me, save me from hell. Thank you for saving me, Jesus. She's not just praying a prayer. She's bringing forth fruits, meat for repentance. Verse 45, Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint. Okay? But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And then he turns around in verse 48, and he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. Who can forgive sins? Nobody but Jehovah God himself. But here is Yeshua forgiving sins. All right? Yeshua HaMashiach is the judge of Israel. Okay? He's the judge of Israel. Only God can forgive sins. He is Jehovah in the flesh. Instead of believing the law and the prophets, the scribes and Pharisees and the lawyers, they rejected the Messiah. They rejected the anointed. The anointed stone, the anointed rock. They reject the law and the prophets. They reject Moses and the prophets. And they rejected the judge of Israel. Alright? Turn to Luke chapter 7. We're going to go earlier to verse 19. Okay? Let's backtrack. And John calling unto him, two of his disciples sent them to Yeshua, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Okay? Are you truly the Messiah? When the men were coming unto him, they said, John the Baptist had sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities, and plagues, and evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Yeshua answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. To the poor the gospel is preached. To the meek the gospel is preached. To the lowly the gospel is is preached. You need to come to a low place in your life to be saved, to humble yourself, to weep and to cry, to find a place of repentance, to come to Yeshua. You don't come with the stiff neck. You don't come with the upright head. You don't come with pride in your heart. You're some religious person dressed in your holy garbs thinking that God God loves you so much surely you don't need his blood right verse 23 and blessed is he whomsoever shall not be offended in me and when the messengers of John were departed he began to speak unto the people concerning John what went ye out into the wilderness for to see a reed shaken with the wind but what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in kings' courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of woman, 
There is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God. Listen, they justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of Him. Okay? They rejected the counsel of God. What is a counsel? Is a judge. The chief counsel. He's going to sit in the throne, in the judgment seat. The chief counsel... And he's going to give counsel. He's going to give judgment. And he's going to explain the Torah. Before you're convicted and you're condemned, the judge reads the law. And then he will pass sentence. Okay? Jehovah sends the messenger before. This is the summons. Before the, the judge appears, you have the one that's going to announce the judge. All rise for the honorable judge. And the judge is going to go. And there's a many, many times, I don't know if it's they do it today, but there's a stone in his place of judgment. And when he passes sentence, he's going to strike that stone. He strikes the rock. You're judged. That's why Yeshua is likened to the stone of Israel. That's why he's the stone of Israel. Moses struck that rock and that rock was Christ. Okay? He's the stone. The stone is a place of judgment. John the Baptist, he prepares the way for the people. He summons the people to appear in court. All those that were to be saved, they were baptized. Okay? And they come. Okay? That's why after someone believes, they're not baptized yet. They need to be baptized. Alright? They, the, they come to John the Baptist. It's called the baptism of repentance. And what did they do? They justify God being baptized with the baptism of John. They justify God. They esteem the Torah. They make the law honorable. They justified. There's scripture, I don't have it. That thou mayest be justified when thou judgest. And thou mayest be clear when thou condemnest. I didn't quote it right. But God is justified in all the sentence he passes. Right? Right? The, the publicans and the sinners, they justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves. They condemned themselves. They didn't submit to the gospel. They didn't believe Yeshua is the Messiah. They didn't believe the messenger's report. They didn't believe... Behold the Lamb of God, when John the Baptist declared, that taketh away the sins of the world. They held the keys to the kingdom. What did Yeshua say? You hold the keys, you withhold it. You enter not in yourselves, and you hinder those that are entering in. These people knew very well what they're doing, and they rejected the counsel of God against themselves. They're anamathema. They curse themselves. They are children of the curse. Yeshua said you're too, you make them more a twofold child of hell than yourselves. He knew, they knew exactly what they're doing. And the scripture says, but the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of Him. Right? The counsel of God, the judge of God, Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. 
He shall bring judgment to the earth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth. And the isle shall wait for his law, for his Torah. All right. They rejected the counsel of God against themselves. The chief judge of Israel is Yeshua. And as I preached last week, Yeshua is the mediator of the covenant. He's the one that stood upon the rock, Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai. Notice where the people came. Notice where the covenant is made. The mediator of the covenant. It's on the rock. They assembled at the foot of the mountain. Okay? They're at a place of judgment. And Yeshua is standing on the mountain. And He descends in the cloud and in the tempest. And the mountain shook and it quaked. And, he, and, he, and Yeshua gives them the counsel of Yehovah. He preaches to them the true gospel. Alright? He's the mediator of the covenant. He's the chief counsel of Yehovah, the judge of Israel. Alright? Let's keep reading. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves being not baptized of Him. Verse 31, And the Lord said, and Yeshua said, Jehovah said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? Notice He calls them a generation. And notice the prophecy and the word that He spoke against that generation. They rejected the counsel of Jehovah. And Yeshua says, you see that they said, look at the temple. And Yeshua says, not one stone shall be left upon another. Okay? This was around 30 AD. Okay? Around 30, 32 AD. Forty years, what happens? 70 AD, Titus comes. Okay? They destroy the temple. Not one stone is left upon another. Where do we find this 40-year place of judgment? Where do we find that at? We find it in the law of Moses. We find it that the generation that stood at the mount and they rejected the counsel of God, the mediator of the covenant, the judge of Israel, they rejected Him. What happened to that generation that rejected Yeshua on Mount Sinai? Forty years, that generation was destroyed. That generation was cut off. They didn't go through into the promised land. They didn't keep going with the gospel of the kingdom. They didn't enter in. Okay? Listen to this parable. Verse 31. And Yeshua said, and Jehovah said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say he hath the devil. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. Wisdom, true wisdom. Phariseeism has no wisdom. You reject the Word of God. You reject the prophecies of Messiah. You reject the light and the truth of the Gospel. You are in darkness. I don't care what Satan's promising you in the Garden of Eden, in the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil. You will not become a god. You are going to become dung in the earth. You're going to be thrown in the lake of fire forever. And your worm will not die. And the fire is not quenched. You reject the judge of Israel, the mediator of the covenant, just like they rejected him on Mount Sinai. There is no more sacrifice of sin. There is no redemption. There is no forgiveness but by the blood of Yeshua. And if you reject the judge and the stone of Israel, why in the scripture over and over and over and over do we find the stone? 
I, it's, it's all over. The more I keep looking, the more I'm finding the, the, the rock of Israel. Why? Because the gospel is a legal, binding, eternal testimony of the law. The eternal law. That's the foundation of salvation. That's the foundation of our faith. It's a foundation. Literally, it's a foundation. Literally, Yeshua, the stone of Israel, the judge of Israel. But wisdom is justified of all her children. The foundation of the gospel and salvation is a legal foundation. It's a legal foundation. Many things that Yeshua spoke in the Gospels, if you read what He's saying, and you read what the Gospels saying, they reject the counsel of God against themselves. They don't count themselves worthy of the blood and body of Yeshua. It's, 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 it's coming to these religious people. It's coming to not just the, the Israel but also to the Gentiles. There's one law, both for Israel, and there's one law, both for the strangers. Alright? This is why we read so much about the rock, the stone of Israel, the shepherd of Israel, the judge of Israel. In the Scriptures, it says, in the Scriptures it is contained, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, it's, that's why all of them, they quote that verse. They say the same thing. Turn to Psalm chapter 37. It's the legal foundation of the gospel. Psalm 37. Verse 1 says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in Jehovah and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in Jehovah, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto Jehovah, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in Jehovah and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Okay? Look at verse 6. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Alright, turn to Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah 41. Verse 17. When the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, Jehovah, will hear them. I, the Elohim of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the shira tree and the myrtle and the oil tree. And I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of Jehovah had done this, and the Holy One of Israel had created it. Listen what he says here. Produce your cause, saith Jehovah. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the King of Jacob. Jacob, let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them, or declare us things for to come. Show us the things that are to come hereafter that we may know that 
we are, that ye are gods. Yea, do good or do evil that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, ye are of nothing and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you. Alright? He's telling them, you think you're a god? Bring your reasons. Show forth thyself. Is like saying, come to court and show me your strong reasons. Alright? Turn to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verse 8. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. What's Jehovah telling them? Come and bring forth your reasons. Bring like another lawyer in court. Come and make your argument. Come and plead your cause. Because you're going to have your day in court. Okay? You're going to have your day in court. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say it is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith Jehovah, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am Jehovah, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared, and have saved, and have, I have showed, when there was no strange God among you, Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith Jehovah, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am He. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Who's going to stop it? Who, who's, who, who stopped Yeshua? No one. They thought they stopped Yeshua. They thought they crucified Him. They thought that was the end of Yeshua. They only did according to His counsel. Of old, according to the word of God, according to the prophecies that he's going to suffer and die and be crucified, pierced. They fulfilled his word to the T. All right? It says, I, even I am Jehovah, and beside me there is no Savior. There is no Savior. Yea, before the day was, I am He. Before the day was, I am He. Where do we find that verse at? We find it in Micah 5. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek, whose goings forth have, from, have been from of old, from everlasting. And who's saying this in Isaiah? He's saying, I, even I am Jehovah, and beside me there is no Savior, Verse 13, Yea, before the day was, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Yea, before the day was, I am He, and there is none that can deliver you out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Who will prevent it? No one. Alright, turn to Zephaniah. Chapter 2. Zephaniah chapter 2. Jehovah Yeshua, the judge of Israel, before the day was, I am He. What did Yeshua say? Before Abraham was, I am. What did He tell Moses what you, when He asked for His name? He said, I am that I am Haya. All right? Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1 it says, Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, 
before the fierce anger of Jehovah come upon you, before the day of Jehovah's anger come upon you, seek ye Jehovah, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be that ye shall be hid in the day of Jehovah's anger. Seek Jehovah, all ye meek of the earth. He's bringing forth a decree. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, the day that burns, the day of Jehovah, before the fierce anger of Jehovah come upon you, He's warning them. Zephaniah is warning them. Before the day of Jehovah's anger come upon you, you better repent. You better believe the gospel. You better submit yourself to the judge of Israel, to the stone of Israel, to the shepherd of Israel, to the chief counsel of Israel, the chief counselor. Seek Jehovah, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, which have brought forth, wrought his judgment, worked his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of Jehovah's anger. Okay? Turn to Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of Jehovah, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And Jehovah said unto Satan, Jehovah rebuke thee, O Satan, even Jehovah that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Okay? Look look how he's clothed. And then go read the book of Revelation. How they're all clothed in white garments. Fine linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. Okay? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Who's saying this? You figure it out. It's Jehovah. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head, so that the, say, set a fair mitre upon his head, and clothe them with garments. And the angel of Jehovah stood by. And the angel of Jehovah protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith Jehovah Sabaoth, If thou wilt walk in my ways. See, Joshua's in court. And the accuser on the other side, the prosecutor, is Satan. And Joshua's in court. Okay? He's in court. Thus saith Jehovah Sabaoth, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wandered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith Jehovah Sabaoth, and I'll remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, saith Jehovah Sabaoth, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Who removed the iniquity of that land in one day? Who is called the branch? Okay? The stone of Israel. Yeshua. 
He says, Behold, in that day, saith Jehovah, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Yeshua came as the mediator of the covenant. He is our advocate with the Father. Our advocate, our lawyer who defends us. Okay? He stands up for us. He fights for us. He forgives us. He's the judge of Israel. Okay? He's the judge. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Turn to Matthew chapter 1. Yeshua called the Messiah, called the Christ. He came to bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He came forth to bring judgment to the earth. He came forth to set judgment in the earth. And the isles shall wait for His Torah. At His birth, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Now the birth of Yeshua Mashiach was on this wise. When His mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Jehovah appeared. Okay? Unto them in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she brought, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. He shall forgive the iniquity of that land in one day. He shall save his, he shall save his people from their sins. What do they bring forth? Zechariah 3 8. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. What does a branch bring forth? What does a branch bring forth? A branch brings forth fruit. Okay? How do you judge men? You judge men by their fruits, what they wrought, what they work. What they bring forth. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I want to look at verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Alright, he talks about in verse 1, Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what manner ye, sh ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Alright? He goes there, then, then he says in verse 15, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. How do you judge? You judge them by their fruits. Verse 16, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. You bring forth your fruit. 
All right. Turn to Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Verse 1. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being the tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Etria and the region of Traconiatis, and Licinius the tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Sophias being the high priest, the word of Jehovah came unto Johanna the son of Zechariah in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance, for the remission of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of Jehovah, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then shall he then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him. O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Notice where the children of Israel were gathered together. Before they crossed into the promised land. They were gathered and they heaped up stones in the midst of Jordan. Then comes John the Baptist. And saying. Say not within yourselves. Begin not to say within yourselves. We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. He said these stones. And like I've preached before, it's the same stones that Joshua and the children of Israel put up. What does he command? He says, bring forth, therefore, fruits, fruits worthy of repentance. Okay? You're going to bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. By their fruits you shall know them. The scribes and Pharisees never shed a tear. They never shed a tear. They said, if you were a prophet, you would know what manner of woman is, is she that toucheth you. They didn't bring forth any fruits. They rejected the counsel of God. All right. John the Baptist went to prepare the way. All right. You bring forth fruits. That is what the judge of Israel is going to judge you by. By your works. Turn to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 1. Yeshua says, I am the vine, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire. And they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and he, it shall be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified. Listen, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. What's, what does Yeshua want? He wants to bring for you to bring forth fruit. Verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you. You're ordained. 
by authority, by the laying on of hands, by the anointing, by the Holy seal of the Holy Spirit. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that ye love one another. Right? To bring forth fruit. Turn to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Verse. Twenty-seven says, Behold, the name of Jehovah cometh from far, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire, and his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity. And there shall be a brittle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. Ye shall have a song as in the night, when a holy psalmity is kept, and gladness of heart, as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of Jehovah, to the mighty one of Israel. And Jehovah shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and shall show the lighting down of his arm, and with the indignation of his anger, and with the flaming of a devouring fire, with scattering and tempest and hailstones. Alright? Sounds like Mount Sinai. For though or through the voice of Jehovah shall the Syrian be beaten down which smote with the rod, and in every place wherein the ground, grounded staff shall pass, which Jehovah shall lay upon him, it shall be with tabrets and harps, and in battles of shaking will he fight with it. For Tophet is ordained of old, yea, for the king it is prepared. He hath made it deep and large, the pile thereof is fire and much wood. The breath of Jehovah, like a stream of brimstone, doth kindle it. Kindle it. Behold, the name of Jehovah cometh from far. Verse twenty-seven, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire. What did Yeshua say? I come in my Father's name. Behold, the name of Jehovah cometh from far. And what's coming out of his lips? Judgment. His lips are full of indignation. And Yeshua was very sharp against the scribes and Pharisees. He was a sharp witness against those that are perverting the gospel and sending people to hell. He's very, he's very full of indignation. And his tongue is as, as a devouring fire. All right? Turn to, back to Isaiah 42, where we started from. Yeshua is the judge. Isaiah 42, verse 1, it says, Behold, my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. The Ruach Kodesh upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. The words of his mouth were words of judgment. Of indignation. He brought forth judgment unto the truth. He brought it unto the truth. He cut through their lies. He brought judgment unto the truth. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth. And the isles shall wait for his Torah. 
All right? Turn to John chapter 16. Keep your hand here. Turn to John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verse 5. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me whither thou goest. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The Comforter is the Holy Spirit. Alright? Isaiah 42, verse 1 says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. How is judgment given? The Holy Spirit's upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Keep your hand there. Go back to John chapter 16. Okay? Verse, end of verse 7. If I go not away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. When Yeshua was in the earth, the Spirit was upon him. When he's baptized of John, what happened? The Holy Spirit, like a dove, descended upon him. Okay? The Spirit was upon him. Yeshua says, I'm going to depart. I'm leaving. But he says, if I depart... I will send my spirit upon I will send my I will send him unto you When does he send the Holy Spirit back to the earth after he departs the day of Pentecost What happens the day of Pentecost It filled all the house What happens that day They speak in tongues they start to witness. Some men say they were drunk. What do they start doing? What does Peter and the apostles start doing? They start to preach. What are they preaching? Judgment. The gospel. Repentance. They crucified him. The Holy Spirit comes back to the earth 50 days later. And what does it do? It brings forth fruits. What happens the day of Pentecost, which is called the day of first fruit? What kind of fruit did it bring forth? The fruit of salvation of men. I believe it was 3,000 got saved that day. Okay? Yeshua is the servant in Isaiah 42. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment. Judgment. He shall bring forth judgment of sin to the Gentiles. And the isles shall wait for my law. But Yeshua knows he's departing. And when he departs, judgment is left for a season. Till the day of first fruit. Then he says, but if I depart, I'll send the comforter unto you which is the Holy Spirit. Turn back to John chapter 16, verse 8. And when He is come, Yeshua says about the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kodesh, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Nobody likes to hear judgment. Very few preachers preach judgment. Very true Few people have the Holy Spirit to even speak judgment. They don't like it. But guess what? The only way you're going to produce fruit is the Holy Spirit has to convict. When when He is come, 
He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye, should, ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto thee. Yet a, a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Yeshua came down to the earth, as Isaiah 42 says, and he went back to heaven. Isaiah 42, 1, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth. And the isle shall wait for his law. What did Yeshua do? He came, he sets judgment in the earth. He says, wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. The day of Pentecost, the day of first fruits comes. The Holy Spirit descends. Guess what? He set judgment in the earth. The Holy Spirit is like fire. It came upon him in the day of Pentecost, did it not? As flames of fire. What did John the Baptist say? He will baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. That's his baptism, whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor. That's the judgment. That's why Yeshua says he walks among the candlesticks. The candlesticks are in the ch churches. In the book of Revelation, you read about the golden candlestick, the seven lamps. And in the seven lamps is a fire. Each one, each church has a, has a fire. And it, you cannot be a church, a congregation, without a lamp lit. And if you don't have it, you don't have it. It's Ichabod. The glory hath departed. The lamps is a sign that Yeshua is saying that the Holy Spirit's there. My judgment, your place of judgment. You're like a circuit court. You're, you're like the stone is laid there. And what two or three have gathered my name. Whatsoever you bind, it's bound. Whatsoever you loose, is loosed. This is all the gospel. That's why Yeshua says... I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. There's so much more. There's so much more. All right? But when Yeshua departs, says Isaiah 42, 1, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. What does Yeshua say? And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. He is the stone of Israel. He is the judge of Israel. Alright. Let's pray.